This is Spinnaker3 here with another amazing Mojo showcase. And today I'm going to be taking Mojo through the Can't Stop, Won't Stop lane in Act 7, Chapter 1, Quest 1. And this lane is basically made for Mojo because Mojo has this great synergy with either Hulk, Rags, or Korg that gives him an unstoppable buff for five seconds when he triggers a prompt. And before Dragon Man, I would say that Mojo was actually the best option for Can't Stop, Won't Stop. And I think that Dragon Man is definitely better, but Mojo's certainly up there. I think he's honestly better than Mangog too. So the nice thing about this lane is that in order to uh, please people who didn't have unstoppable buffs, because not a lot of champs do have access to that, Fight or Flight is on this, which means that every 12 seconds, depending on if I'm close to the defender or far away from him, I'm either going to get an unstoppable buff or he will. And the reason that this is important is because Mojo kind of counters this node. Because if Mojo gets the unstoppable, great. Then Mojo gets an extra fury. But if Howard the Duck gets the unstoppable, then with my anti-life field, I shorten the duration by 90%. And then I get a uh, degen put on Howard the Duck. So you notice right there, I triggered a prompt, completed it, got the unstoppable buff. And now I'm just knocking down the opponent because the node here, I believe it's called Muscle Wizard gives me a fury buff when I knock the opponent down. So you notice here, Howard triggered the unstoppable when my field was not active, and so I just had to wait it out a bit. But you notice that Mojo gets the furies very quickly. And this is also only the first fight, which means this is gonna be the slowest fight on the entire path, because this is gonna be where I have to complete five prompts in order to get my anti light field fury. So you notice that the furies just keep on stacking, honestly, and you'll notice that the unstoppable buff Every time it gets placed on me when I already have an unstoppable buff, then I get a fury put on me. And so my basic attacks are dealing a lot of damage, and each degeneration is ticking for even longer. There you notice that Howard the Duck got the unstoppable, but you barely even saw it because it was gone so quickly. The self-repair on Howard the Duck, the regeneration buff, is also turning into degens. Many haters are going on him, and you can see that he is just dropping. There are so many degenerations right now on Howard the Duck. And this fight is just an absolute treat because of that. It's just I'm barely having to do much work and Howard the Duck is just dropping. And my health bar is staying fairly consistent. I mean, Mojo's survivability on this path is very good because Mojo hardly needs to actually take any block damage because he's constantly gaining power. So this next fight here is with Cull Obsidian, and Cull Obsidian is normally mystic food, but unfortunately, Mojo doesn't have any easy access to a large-scale nullify. So unfortunately, I don't get to take advantage of all the buffs that go on Cull, but I'm still able to do a lot of work on him. You notice that I'm just knocking down Cull Obsidian just a few times to get more Furies, get more Unstoppables, and I'm completing prompts to get even more Unstoppables, and the Furies are already stacked up pretty high. And so right now, just if had to evade Cull Obsidian Special 1. Both of his specials are fairly easy to deck, so there's no worry there. I find that with the Unstoppable buff, it becomes a little trickier to actually dodge the opponent, but that may just be me. So right there, you notice Cull Obsidian got the Unstoppable buff. It immediately expired, and I launch my Special 2 with 5 Furies on me. Each degeneration take is doing over 4,000 damage, which is a lot of damage here i get hold block which is one of the worst prompts so yeah i do take a block damage into the face but you notice my health bar it's still doing very well and this is a spoiler alert but i will be finishing this path with quite a lot of health i think i slip up once but it doesn't even matter with mojo so just once again this is still the second fight so the ramp up was still there and it got over pretty quickly. This is with class advantage too, so that's definitely a factor to consider. But Cull Obsidian is pretty much already down. I just need to hit him one more time, and he's down. So that was a good fight. It didn't take too many hits. And the next one is going to be against Dr. Octopus. And now Dr. Octopus gets a couple of buffs that I can take advantage of, so this matchup's definitely going to be a bit better. He gets an armor up buff every now and then when he triggers the middle breakthrough. So I just need to trigger that armor up when I have my anti-life field prompt active, and it'll convert into a degeneration, which is going to be very nice. So for the next few fights, I decided to show that Mojo can still ramp up without even focusing on heavy attacking. You notice that in the previous fights, I was trying to purposefully knock the opponent down to get 
to the Fury max limit on this Muscle Wizard node. But instead here, I'm just letting these special attacks knock him down, and I'm just trying to see whether Mojo can still get a lot of damage just playing with a natural playstyle. And you notice that Mojo is able to do that because every time he re-triggers the Unstoppable and knocks down on a special attack, he gets that extra Fury. And that extra Fury does put in a lot of work. So this fight is actually going pretty quickly still, even though I'm not actively trying to knock down the opponent. So right now I'm just trying to manage the unstoppables on me, the unstoppables on him. Massive amounts of buffs are triggering Mystic Dispersion, just constantly shooting me up to a special two. And this fight is just going really smoothly. Like the main reason I wanted to upload this entire path was because Mojo is just such a fun option for it too. Not only is he really good for it, he's really fun for it. And I think with Act 7, I especially Act 7.1. I've seen the 7.2 beta. It's a little bit different. But 7.1 was very forgiving. 7.1 was supposed to be that any champion can do any path because like they were meant to be, they were meant to have these little safeguards that can allow you to bring many champions instead of very few. But Mojo is just such a good option for this path that even though many others can do it just by knocking down the opponent and being a mystic champion, I thought that Mojo was honestly the most fun. So this next fight is going to be with Beast. It's not a buff matchup, so there's no many buffs for me to take advantage of, get a lot of power from. But once again, Mojo doesn't need the opponent to have buffs. Mojo places his own hater buffs on the opponent when he's at 5 followers and subscribers, which I reach right now because this is pretty far down the map, and Mojo is fully ramped up. Right there, the unstoppable triggered on Beast, and it immediately expired. I'm just special intercepting him right now to get my special two. And in the time that I've talked, which hasn't been much, he's already dropped all the way down to 80%. So Mojo is just doing this really quickly without even having all the buffs from the node active. And that's because Mojo's anti-life field fury buff is insanely large. It gives him an attack bonus that's around two times his regular attack, which is a lot of attack. So right here, it's just more intercepts. I'm just trying to sort of play this really safe, trying not to take as much block damage as possible, just to see if I can really end this fight with a yellow bar. And so I am playing it a little cheeky. You don't need to do that as well. I have the Nick Fury evades on my side just in case. And I'm just trying to see if I can get through this a little slower, but with more sustainability. And you notice I'm pretty much healing all the way to full with Mojo's regeneration and a bit of willpower along the side, which hasn't come into play now, but it may come into the play later. And I, right there, I was able to get the special two off because before the anti-life field expired and get the massive degens and beast drops. And that wasn't many very hits at all, around under 50 hits to take down beast. Next one, and the, the next two fights are actually going to be really fun because Venom the Duck has a lot of buffs that I can turn into degenerations. And Colossus's armor buffs, armor up buffs are also going to be turned into degens as well. So these sites are just really fun. I could have ended this video earlier on, but I really just wanted to show Mojo clearing the entire path down. So right here, Venom the Duck, like when he reaches a hundred of his Venom the Duck charges, he gains a buff. And that buff, when it expires and I have my uh, anti-life field up, it turns into a degeneration. So Venom the Duck is going to, going to be constantly dropping down from the degeneration damage. And Mojo is just going to constantly be knocking him down, getting more Furies for himself, and just putting in a lot of work to really get this Venom the Duck down. You notice that perfect block buff? Instantly gone. So this fight also gives me... I have class advantage in this fight as well. And I am chilling at around 100%. And here I do get the block hold block prompt, which is one of the most frustrating prompts in my opinion. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to play a little passive, but uh, Venom the Duck doesn't play into it. So instead the thing goes down, but luckily because I have my mojo awakened, it doesn't matter that I missed the prompt and lost five followers because my, my awakened ability allows me to store the amount of subscribers and not lose any followers back to that certain point. So I have five subscribers, so I'm never going to go under five followers in my thing. So I can always stay at the same amount. Here, I to get the whole block prompt, I beat into Venom the Duck's block so that he holds his block for even longer, and I can trigger the prompt without taking any block damage myself. 
There, you notice the Nick Fury evades energy definitely helped. And here I get knocked down the opponent, just trying to balance it out, and I get hit. So this was unfortunately, I was trying to be as close to a full yellow bar as I possibly could. And then Venom the Duck just got me when I tried to intercept him. So that was unfortunate, but <laughs> it's it was just a personal thing I was trying to do. Mojo is still just a fantastic option for this fight. And now that I'm not at a full yellow bar, I just decided I was going to take this Colossus as fast as I possibly could. So one thing to note with Colossus is that the best way to play him with Mojo is to push him to a special 2. Because on the special 2, Colossus gets a lot of temporary armor up buffs. Now, Mojo doesn't operate too well with permanent buffs because then I have to throw the special one and that just gets out of his good rotation. So in order to manage buffs, you want them to have a lot of temporary buffs that can expire into degenerations like that Unstoppable just did and the Hater buff as well. So I want him to get temporary armor up buffs. And Colossus on his special two actually gains a number of te uh, temporary armor up buffs that's proportional to the number of armor up buffs currently on him. So pushing him to the special two is always nice because if you notice when he throws the special two, he get he got an armor up buff that then expired and that turned into a degeneration, but it also turned into a permanent armor up buff, which means that when he throws his next special two, he'll get even more armor up buffs that get turned into degenerations. So Mojo really likes this because it's, it's just a cycle that keeps feeding him more power, more degenerations when there's all those temporary buffs. And Mojo doesn't really do too much damage on his basic hits as much as he does it from his degenerations. So it doesn't matter that Colossus is getting so many armor ups right now. Right there, I got I hit his block, which was unfortunate when I tried to special intercept. But I did have the Nick Fury evade synergy, which helped me recover after throwing my special into his block. Because even though he tried to punish it, I was still able to evade it and then get my block ready to block. Here, I just threw my special one to finish the fight because it's basically almost done just gotta hit him one more time with a special one and colossus goes down so this was just an, a really nice showcase of how mojo can take down a lane an entire lane all by himself in uh, act 7.1 and he can do the final boss i just chose to leave it out of this video and save it for a future one because this run i wasn't able to get a good solo but i'll definitely upload that in the future so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and comment on what Mojo content you want to see next or if you want me to start branching out to other champions. Catch you later.